friends, this is Daniel Mulliken. I'm here to introduce to you the cello. So a cool fact about the cello is that the name cello is actually a nickname. Its name is actually the violon cello, which in Italian means big little viol. And the viol is an ancestor to the current violin and current upright bass. All right, let's get our instrument out of the case. Now, some of you may have a case like this, a hard plastic case or fiberglass, and some of you may have a soft case. For the video, I'm gonna show you how to get your instrument out of a soft case, which most of you probably have. First step, take the bow out of the case. Hold the bow only from the frog and put it someplace safe where it won't fall. Do not put it on the ground because you may step on it. Second step, hold your instrument from two places, left and right hand on your case and bring it down to a safe spot. The floor is very safe because it can't fall if it's on the floor. Here we are bringing it down. Now on one side of your case, you have zippers and the other side doesn't. Have the zippers facing you with the top of the case facing towards the ceiling. Most cases are pretty obvious. Which one's the top, which one's the bottom? The top may have backpack straps or buckles and the front is where you took your bow out from or it has other zippers and handles. So my instrument is safe with its back on the ground. Zippers are facing me. I'm going to unzip. Your case may have two zippers. So I'm gonna unzip all the way. So it's important that you unzip the zippers all the way because if you don't unzip them all the way, when you open it, you may rip the zipper open and damage it. So I open the case and I see my cello in there. Now when I take it out of the case, I'm going to hold it with both hands. One hand here on the neck and the other hand here on the C-bout. Here's how you do that. And I bring it up to standing position and my cello is out of the case. All right, now that we have our cello out of the case, let's talk about the parts of the instrument. We're gonna start at the top and we're gonna work our way all the way down to the bottom. So at the top, we have the scroll. It's called the scroll because it kind of looks like a rolled up piece of paper, like they used in like ancient Egypt. The scroll is connected to what's called the peg box, this whole thing right here. And in the peg box, you have the pegs. Now your cello probably has four pegs. Mine only has two sticking out, the other two are shortened for posture purposes. Each peg corresponds to each of your four strings. Moving our way down, we have the nut. The nut is that little raised piece of wood that the strings go over. It's a little bit higher than the next piece of our instrument I'm gonna talk about. This long black piece of wood here is called the fingerboard. The fingerboard is where we put our fingers to change the pitch of our strings. The fingerboard is connected to the neck and at the bottom of the neck, we have the heel, just like your foot. At the back of the neck here, we have what's called the button. The button is important because later on we're gonna talk about the button and how it helps us with our cello posture. Here we have the top or the face of the instrument. That's this large piece of wood on the front. We have the ribs or the sides, and then we have the back. Real creative on that one, right? On the top of our instrument, we have F holes. They're cut, they're supposed to look kind of like fancy letter Fs, cursive Fs, and that's where the sound comes out of. On the top of the instrument, we have the bridge. The bridge is this piece of wood right here. Now the bridge is only held down with tension from the strings pushing against the face of the instrument. So it can move and fall down, and if it falls down, you have a series of issues. So never hold your instrument from the bridge, and it's just a good idea not to handle it. Uh, when you're moving your instrument, be careful it doesn't bump against a chair or something else. On top, Plus passing over the nut, over the bridge, you have the strings. We have four strings. They are named A, D, G, and C from highest to lowest. The strings are connected at the bottom of our instrument at the tailpiece. On the tailpiece, we have fine tuners. Now your instrument may have four fine tuners like mine, or it could have a few less. The fine tuners are where we change the pitch of our open string either up a little bit or down a little bit by turning clockwise or counterclockwise. Now we'll probably be using these earlier on than we will be using the pegs. The pegs are held in with friction and they make big changes in the pitch of our string. So it's important early on in your playing, just don't mess with the pegs. Have a teacher or a professional help you with that. And if we need to make fine adjustments, we can use our fine tuners. That's a safer option. Okay, the tail piece is tied to the bottom of our instrument with what's called the tail gut. Mine's a piece of Kevlar rope. Yours might be a piece of nylon plastic. It's just held on with tension from the strings pulling. And at the very bottom of our instrument, special part of the cello, is the end pin. The end pin is adjusted by turning this screw 90 degrees and pulling the end pin out to the correct length. Only turn this screw 90 degrees because if you turn it more than that, it can come out and it's hard to get back in. So only turn it 90 degrees. Once you've extended your end pin to the correct length, tighten it, and then you can move your instrument into playing position, holding again from the neck and the C-bout. 
This part right here is a very important part of our instrument. It's a nice handle to hold, it's safe. Also, we're gonna use this with our playing posture as well. I'm gonna put my cello down. I'm gonna loosen the end pin screw 90 degrees, put the end pin back in, and then tighten it back. And I'm gonna move my cello to the floor, holding from those two points. How do we sit when we're playing our cello? So when we sit in a chair playing a cello, it's a little bit different than we normally sit. When we sit in a chair, usually we sit back and we relax. Now, when we're playing the cello, we don't want to slouch and we want to have our back away from the back of the chair. So we have this gap here. You should be able to fit, like if you're wearing a backpack, it would fit right in between your back and the back of the chair. I'm sitting right on the front edge of the chair and both of my feet are flat on the ground. You want to have them flat on the ground so you have nice, good posture. Now, here's a test to see if you're, if you're sitting correctly. If you pick your feet up, you should fall forward. If this happens, you got it wrong. So make sure that you're sitting up nice and straight. Your energy should be going forward. So now that we're sitting correctly, let's learn how to hold our instrument in playing position. So you can see that my cello is on the ground safely on its side. I'm going to pick it up from the neck and the c-bout, bring it up to a vertical position, and then I'm going to rest the cello with the c-bout in between my left knee here. So it's nice and safe. I still have one hand on the instrument. I'm moving my right hand down to the tensioning screw of the end pin, and I'm extending my end pin. See, everybody is different in height, torso length, leg length, so the length of your end pin will be different. And if you're growing, it's gonna be different day to day. So start out maybe with about a foot. I know mine needs to be about this long. I'm gonna tighten my screw back up nice and tight. I'm going to bring the instrument down to the floor, again, holding from the C-bout and the neck, and I'm gonna put the end pin into my rock stop. Now, my cello is sitting against me. I still have my nice space between my back and the back of the chair, and my feet are flat on the floor. There are a couple points of contact I want you to double check. So remember we talked about the button? The button should be over your heart. If you've ever done the Pledge of Allegiance, it's that part right there. Right where your ribs separate over your rib cage, just left of that. The button is going to access your heart right there. The C peg, again, my cello is missing a peg, sticking out of here. We want to have this C peg about where our ear canal is, sitting about right there. If your cello end pin is too long, you might have this angle, and if it's too short, you may have this angle. So we want to make sure that that C peg is poking us right in the ear while the button is over our heart. Last point of contact are these wings right here, these corners right below the C-bouts. We want to make sure that our knees are sitting below those. We don't want our knees to go in the C-bout when we're in playing position. If my end pin is the right length and all my other points of contact are correct, my knees sit below the wings. I'm going to put my cello back on the floor safely, two hands, not making a loud clunk, nice and safe on its side. Next, the bow. We're going to talk about the parts of the bow. We have from this end to this end. The tensioning screw. We can turn this clockwise, like this, to tighten it. When we tighten the bow, we only want the hair to be about a finger width apart, maybe a pinky, depending on your bow, between the hair and the stick here. We only want a little bit. We want to keep this curve, this concave curve to our bow. That helps the bow retain its bounce to use when we play. If you go too tight, it, the bow might look straight or it might make a bow this way convex curve. We don't want that. That puts too much tension on the stick and the hair and can cause issues. Okay, with my bow here back in a horizontal position, this, this part right here, this long piece of wood is called the stick. Again, very creative, right? We have the frog, F-R-O-G, ribbit, ribbit, the French word. And on the frog, we have this little piece of silver. This little piece of shiny silver here is called the ferrule. Again, another French word. We're going to use that when we learn to hold our bow. For rule, again, the horse hair is connected at the frog and it connects here at the top at the tip of our bow. We also have here, this is called the bow leather or thumb leather, and then we have on my bow the winding, the silver winding. Now the winding is added to your bow to add weight to this side of the bow to give it a really nice balance. Your bow may or may not have the winding. That's okay, maybe it didn't need it. Now a tip about the tip. The tip is very fragile. It's really thin right here, and then your little tip right there is also very fragile. You want to be mindful that you're not using it to move things around on your music stand. You don't want a sword fight, to tap it on the floor, to poke your neighbor. You want to be very careful with it. You can easily drop it, so you want to be careful as well. So this is a very fragile part of your bow. When loosening your bow, when you're not playing it, we want to go back to the tensioning screw and turn it counterclockwise, loosening it until the hair returns close to the stick like this. We don't want to go too loose. If we go too loose, the hair gets very jangly like this and loose, and we don't want that. 
We want the hair to be nice and in line with each other. As you're loosening the screw, you can kind of feel when all of a sudden the tension releases, and it just gets a little loose. Oh, there it is, right? And you can also feel it gets a little tight when you're tightening it. Since we have the bow in our hand, let's talk about the bow hold. So again, I'm returning my bow to a tightened position. With your left hand, hold the bow on the stick in the center. With your right hand, shake it out and get it nice relaxed. Nice relaxed hand. A visualization that I like to use is I like to think about dipping my right hand in a bucket full of warm melted chocolate. Shake it around, get it real sticky, and pull it out. Oh, let it drip. Mmm, delicious. Now, we're going to take our middle finger with our dripping hand here and have our middle finger touch that piece of silver on your bow called the ferrule right on the fingerprint of your finger there. Check that your hand is relaxed. The other fingers just flop right next to it where they would fall naturally. Now here's the tricky part. Curve your thumb ever so slightly and have it touch this part of your bow right on the top lip of the frog. It's going to be curved. Here's what it looks like upside down. It's going to be nice and curved. Again, my middle finger on the ferrule, fingers relaxed, curve my hand under. Now, imagine taking your bow with both hands and putting it up on a high shelf. We want our wrist to have just a very slight curve to it that continues through the tips of our fingers. Sort of like water flowing. We don't want a waterfall. We don't want a big kink in our hose here. We want it nice and smooth. To check that your wrist is relaxed, wiggle your wrist. Give it a couple, like, couple little dribbles like a basketball. And if you're feeling pretty comfortable, you can let go of your left hand and do the same thing and do the rubber pencil trick, the rubber bow trick. If you're feeling a little uncomfortable, you can put your left hand or left arm underneath the bow and let it rest there and check that. There's your bow hold. All right, so we're done playing our cello. We're gonna go ahead and put it away in our case. There's a few simple steps that I want you to follow. Again, always hold your instrument from two places, the neck and the C bout. Have your cello case. Now I put my soft cello case on sort of the way I would put a shirt on it. Put my head through the hole first. So. Our cello's head is the scroll. It's gonna go right into the top of our case first. So it sits there. I always have a hand on my instrument. Making sure that the front is where the bridge is and the back is corresponding to the back of our instrument. We're gonna let it just slide on. Now, if you ever feel like you have to force it, something got caught. It's easy to get the fine tuners or the bridge caught on the case. So don't force it. Should go on really easily. Line it up. Now I like to start my zip in the standing position. Get it zipped up a little bit. Then with two hands, you can have one hand on the instrument over here and the other on a handle. Lay it down flat on its back, just like when we started, when we opened it. And then just continue your zip. Again, if you feel like you have to force the zippers, something's wrong. Maybe on a little crooked. Should just go easy like that. Make sure you zip both zippers. Then have your instrument. Again, two hands, handle and the case, two points where it's safe. Stand your instrument back up, grab your bow, which has been loosened, put it in tip first into the bow bag, holding only from the frog, and let it slide in again. If you feel resistance, something's maybe stuck in there, don't force it, let it slide in there easy, and then Velcro it shut, and your cello's safe and ready to be put away. Thank you.